I was a huge fan of the French film and had seen it when it first came out and it stayed with me. So when I first heard about the English language version of it, I was hesitant because I didn't want to mess it up. It's a beautiful film and I wanted to do it justice. But because the character and the story stayed with me so much, I kept thinking about it. And the script was really good, and, and they were open to new ideas to infuse it with some, some freshness and some, some, you know, American colloquialisms and that sort of sensibility. And it finally just, it's always a good sign if something just stays with me for a long time, then I, I know that's, that's um, something I should probably pay attention to. And eventually I said, okay, let's do this. Well, I read his book, first of all, and then uh, contacted him. And, and he was very gracious and, and willing to tell me what he could of himself and of his life. And he had no delusions about where he is and, and what his life is like. It's, it's challenging still to this day. He's been in the chair for 25 years, and that's a long time for someone who is in that position. And he lives in Morocco, and he and Abdel are still friends to this day. What I love about this story is that it really is a love story between two straight men who who don't realize the other person has the key to unlock their future. Not that they can live it for them, of course not, but just allowing them to see a glimpse of potential. Philip is a, a wealthy businessman, um, an adventurer, and um, everything was going quite well for him married, in love, and, um, and then tragedy struck in, in two swift blows. His wife contracted cancer, and he had this paragliding accident that broke his neck. It's a story of hope. It's a story of possibility. He knew exactly the tone of this and what he needed and wanted to do. It's perfect for him in his career to be able to step into a role that's not necessarily in his wheelhouse, that he d doesn't just go, got it, I know this, I do this every day. It's not that. So he's, he's really taken it very seriously. He's profoundly talented. We want to have fun while we're doing this. We do the work, be very sincere about the work and getting it, but there should be a, a large measure of fun doing it. Nicole Kidman, um, she's a delight, just pure delight. She's on the set a lot, you know, whereas a lot of times when you stop shooting and you restructuring a scene, the actors will go off to their dressing rooms and stuff. And we're on the set a lot. We stay there and we laugh and we have a lot of fun. Maggie is the physical therapist. She's quite strong, quite practical, quite um, she has kind of distance between what she does and what the reality is. She doesn't get emotional as everybody is getting emotional. Um, and um, I guess she's trying to do her job as, as well as possible. Well, Kevin is so lovely and funny and um, um, 
I mean, I just take so many things back from this project uh, from him. <laughs> all his jokes and tone of his voice, but I think behind all that um, funny thing, I see also vulnerability. I see a f he's very fragile. That's what I also see in him, and it's very uh, touching and very gentle and very tender. He's very um, and he's very um, deep. I can say he sees things um, that. He might not think that he's there, but he's in every detail, he's seeing everything, and it's he's very kind, all his crew very kind. It's very it's really lovely working with him. Brian, he's just wonderful. He's so he's a gentleman and he's very quiet. He's uh um his smile tune of his voice on our conversation we had about life, philosophy and all that. It's uh, lovely, lovely, L really. The crew and cast, they're just amazing. And Neil, uh, Neil is amazing working with him. Um, he pays attention to all the details. He. Um, even somehow, uh, sometimes he just come and just turn you around for like an inch and that inch is exactly what he wants. And um, um, he, he works a lot with actors and we do many takes uh, sometimes and it's good because I can see that he's searching and um, uh, amazing. He's great. Once we knew that Brian and Kevin were firmly in, it, it was, and casting was pretty great and, and easy to do, I would say, for the But most at the part. same time, when you know you've got your two leads that are just going to be magic together, it really matters who you surround them yeah. with. And those actors have to be able to keep up with the stamina and the comedy and the drama side of what's going on. Um, once we zeroed in on Nicole Kidman, we knew we had something really special. First off, she's one of the greatest actresses we have working today. Um, her body of work has shown that she has chosen roles that challenge her, that take you in different directions. I think the most important thing with casting for us was just a reality to it. You know, when, you, when people hear Kevin Hart, they immediately think it's gonna be broad and funny, and this is getting to see Kevin funny for sure but also kind of in a, in a more serious, dramatic way with his funny. And, and we just wanted to make sure that we were signaling to the audience that, you know, this was not your typical Kevin Hart movie or your, or I mean, Brian's been in all kinds of movies and TV shows. So we just wanted to balance it out with this cast. And I think we've done a good job at that. It's, been amazing to watch it unfold. And I sit there in dailies and I, you know, are on set as we watch these scenes. And I can't believe how disciplined of an actor you he is, but have to be at the same time. Jason and I had dinner last night with Brian and he was saying that he actually has learned to relax when, in the chair, when he's in the chair, just to let his body go and put it all into his brain and just relax into the role so that he doesn't feel the need to move his hands or anything like that. And it's a real discipline, actually. It's a crazy discipline that he's learned. The research that Brian put in is also top notch. He met with a number of quadriplegics. He met at a number of the institutes around in Philadelphia that care for people that have had these accidents or were born this way. Um, he met with the wheelchair specialist. He met with a specialist just about in every regard that you can cover. Um, he wanted to meet with those people in real life, not with cameras rolling. He wanted to spend time with them. He wanted to ask questions with them. Um, Get to know them mentally, not just physically. Yeah, and, and, and kind of what they go through just in their everyday life, just what they think about you know, just just an emotional level also. And I think it meant a lot to him because yeah. I did get to see him a couple times when he came back and you can just tell 
that it affected him. how it affected him and how he wanted to deliver a performance that not only we would be proud of, but they would be proud of. And I know he's doing that. And we have a consultant on set every day and, you know, just that every single thing that we're doing is real. Right. And that also starts from the top down. Neil wanted a level of accuracy that um, was detail oriented and yet at the same time felt as if when you watch the movie, you could almost experience what these people actually go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's the challenge as producers is to make sure, once again, we're making a movie. Um, and we want people to love it and be entertained by it, but we also want people to be affected by it in a good way. We want people to and, really take and bring part. real reality to yeah. it, which, like Jason said, you know, our director that was paramount to him as it was to Brian. What he didn't expect, which is also what Jason's saying, what Phillips didn't expect either, is that these two people came into each other's lives at the perfect moment. Right. And they changed, and this is the real life story of Philip and Dell. They changed each other's lives at a time where they most, they both most needed it, which is really great. The perfect time to come out that is about other, being aware of others and being empathetic. That's a word you use, which I love. Being, learning to become empathetic if you aren't uh, or learning to bring it back because I think everybody's born with empathy, but I think you have to kind of cultivate empathy. And teach it. And I'm hoping that, you know, yes, we want people to be entertained in the movies, but at the same time, if you can walk away with something more valuable than just a couple of laughs, I think that's really important. It's a critical time for this movie, I think. Yeah. I really do. I think more now than ever, this country, the United States, needs a movie that you can feel honest emotion from. And it shows the power that two strangers who knew nothing of each other, nothing of each other's lives, who come together, which is what happened in the real life story. Yeah. It's and just very, it's an honest love. Yeah. It's not put on. It's not because Philip's rich or it isn't because he feels the need to do something for Dell you know, because of guilt, is that they fell in love with one another. It's, it is a love story of two men. It was a no-brainer, you know. I was, I was about to be in a movie with Brian Cranston and Nicole Kidman. So to me, there was no room for error. There was no reason to be hesitant uh, and it was take full advantage of the opportunity. So I jumped in feet first. This is us doing our version of this film and, you know, of course trying to modify it uh, to fit the times and, and Americanize it a little bit. I said, but you know, I hope that what we do makes you guys proud because you did such an amazing job in the first one. So it was just making sure that you understood that there was a high level of respect for their performances and just for the amazing job that they did with their movie and understand that we are trying to do the same. Um, you know, just going uh, a different way about it. We're just taking some different roads and streets to get to the ultimate point, which is the uh, love story between these two men that are straight. Dell, Dell, <sighs> Dell is a complex individual. You know, Dell is a guy who uh, who just couldn't seem to get it right. You know, he's a guy that was incarcerated, and now now that he's gotten out, uh, he's looking for what could be the quick fix, the quick win, that uh, that road that you can take that doesn't require the hard work that some expect or want to see implemented into a craft. Um, because I'm trying to get out of things and not do them the way I'm supposed to, I look for shortcuts, quick turns. I end up thinking that I found one by getting the opportunity to go on a job interview that doesn't end up being the job that I thought it would be. So in return, when that happens, I end up getting thrown in the situation I didn't want to be thrown in because accidentally something gets offered to me that I'm not expecting at all. And because of that offer, once I see the financial success in it, 
no burner. I'm going to take it because I'm not going to do anything anyway. The relationship between Phil and Dell evolves because you're looking at two men that didn't sign up to be friends. They stepped into this situation um, with the mindset of figuring it out. Phil on hoping that his guess was correct and that this guy could end up being good and cool to be around at this job. Dell and, oh my God, I got this money. I'm gonna try to milk as much as I can from this. How long am I gonna be able to milk it? And doing that, they both unlock different layers to each other. That's where the love story aspect comes in, you know. Dell truly believes that money is everything and that if you have it, you're happy. Whereas Phil is a great example of having money and not being happy. He's a great example of feeling incomplete. So it takes me making him realize that he has a lot to be thankful for and appreciate. And it takes him making me realize that I can't keep crying over what's considered to be spilt milk. You know, uh, my bitching and complaining isn't gonna change my life. Effort and actions will. And it takes a certain tone and it takes an approach to make me realize and understand it. That's where I get it from. I was blown away by the people that they were offset. On set, I knew I was getting a high level of professional. I knew that I was going to get the best of the best, but I had no idea what they would be offset, off camera. Um, the personalities were amazing. Nicole was a sweetheart. We joked, we played in between takes. Brian was amazing as well. I mean, the rapport that I had with both of them throughout the duration of the film was unbelievable. So the fact that I can call them both friends today is a, is a good thing. Me and Brian did become close, you know? Brian's, a, once again, just a great guy. So, you know, after finding the chemistry that we found and knowing that we had it, while filming the movie, when it's time to end, that doesn't go anywhere. You don't cut the relationship off. It, it lasts. It's maintained. What I liked about the script was it was about two people coming together, sort of bridging, bridging the gap in there, you know, between them and the divisions between them. And I thought that it was a perfect time to make a movie that had a theme like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I said yes, and I felt like I knew how to do it, and um, so I came on board. The movie's based on a true story about a wealthy man, Philip, played by Brian Cranston, who has quadriplegia and um, who is depressed and kind of wants to blow up his life in a way. And so what he does is he hires the least qualified person to be his caregiver, which is Dell, played by Kevin Hart. Um, and they at first have nothing in common, and everybody's like, why did you hire this guy? And even he's not sure why he hired this guy to be his caregiver. Um, but they ended up becoming incredible friends and actually sort of unlocking the possibility of uh, a better life and of love in each other. Casting Brian Cranston was just a no-brainer. I mean, he's really one of the great actors of our generation, and he worked so hard on the role and to do it right and to do it respectfully um, as somebody who is in a wheelchair. And, uh, and he's an actor that has such incredible empathy, yet also like such a wonderful and kind of light sense of humor. It was sort of the perfect combination for, for that character. And then with Kevin Hart, um, when I first heard Kevin was a possibility, I was like, wait, what? Does, does, that, does that make sense for this, for this movie? I love Kevin Hart, he's really funny, but I didn't know if he was the right fit for this. And then I met Kevin and uh, he talked about his 
his upbringing and how he just knew this person. He knew this person from growing up and actually in our first meeting, he, he did the character in a way, not by reading the lines, he just sort of, he went into character and I was like, I'm completely sold. Um, but people are gonna be blown away because Kevin has incredible dramatic chops that nobody's seen before. And you know, he's amazing in this movie. In the movie, Kevin's character, Dell, has gotten out of prison recently, and he has to prove that he's looking for work to keep you know, his parole going. And so he's gotta get signatures that prove he's looking for work, and he stumbles into um, Brian Cranston's apartment, Philip's apartment, thinking that it's the, a, a job that's actually being offered in the basement. And he just, he, he completely gets himself into the wrong place. Um, and when Cranston's character, Philip, meets him, he's just intrigued with this, this guy who just doesn't belong in this apartment.